Hi, pre-calculus students. Welcome to section 1.7, Transformations of Functions. Um, doing this section after 1.6 on parent functions um, makes so much sense because um, parent functions, right? The basics, we had a little library of eight parent functions. Now, if we transform them in some way, they still have the shape, same shape, but they look uh, different, right? They have some added features of being moved, uh, being reflected, being stretched or compressed. And uh, those would be called like children functions. So it makes sense to study parent functions and then transformations of them next. Now you have studied transformations tons in algebra one and algebra two. And so what I do in pre-calc is just, again, it's just a review. It's a good review because in calculus, we do use our knowledge of different functions such as you know x squared, x cubed, and especially the absolute value function to do calculus operations. And so all we do in then pre-calc then is I gave you a 1.7 activity so that you can be reminded of what the different transformations are and you can tell me what the rules are. Um, so uh, what we found in our 1.7 activity is that if you add or subtract to a parent function, it shifts functions, right? Left, right, up, or down. If you multiply, multiplying stretches or compresses functions, multiplying by a negative one reflects. So you have to be careful when you have an equation, um, a function is being multiplied by a negative two. Those are actually two separate things. It's being multiplied by a two, which stretches or compresses, and it's being multiplied by a negative one, which reflects. So we do treat those separately. Changes to x in the function show opposite on the graph, right? So if you add a three to an x inside a function, literally inside with parentheses, um, it will actually move the function to the left three, right? Um, if you multiply an x by two, it will actually compress it by a half. OK, and um, there's good reasons for that. And so when we are in class, if you're like, well, why does it do that? Why does it do the opposite for horizontal changes? I will show you why that is true. Um, changes not to x. So if you don't have a change to an x in parentheses, that means it's changing the function, it's changing the y. And any changes you make to the function itself or to the y value will show the same on a graph. In other words, if you have a parent function like x cubed and you put a plus two, not in parentheses, but to the right or to the left of the x cubed, it will actually move the graph up two. Okay, so, um, so we're going to try some transformations. I picked um, 58, 17b, and 63. Um, a out of your book to give you a variety of what you'll see on your homework. After I wrote it, I decided that I wanted to do it in a different order than left to right from what you see, and I'll show you why. You actually do have to be like a little careful when you're transforming functions because, you know, is it is it a function that's first been reflected and then moved left or right, or was it moved left and right and then reflected? Um, however, we keep it keep it pretty basic here. Okay, so um, let's see, what did I think needed to be done first? Let's look at 17b. Okay, in the middle. Given f of x is the absolute value function, right? We know that that is that v shape that's broken into two lines, right? Um, on its own, it would be the y equals x line for x greater than zero, and the y equals negative x line for less than zero. So given that you are starting with the absolute value function, and you probably can see that, that it has this V shape, they want you to write the equation for this graph. So here's our original equation, and they want us to um, create a child function from the parent function using any of these transformations, okay? So um, the cool thing about this is we can do this by hand without a calculator, and we should. None of these problems have a graphing calculator symbol next to it, but you can use your calculator to check to make sure, you know, after you um, write it, put it in your calculator. Does it do that? Does it look like that? Okay, so let's take a look. So let's start out with either y or f of x, right? The absolute value of x. So that's the shape. We have that, right? 
<coughs> now, the next thing I do is ask myself, has it been moved left or right or up or down? Well, it hasn't been moved up or down, right? Because the absolute value function looks like this, right? Where the vertex is at zero, zero. So that vertex has not been moved up or down. Has this vertex been moved left or right? Yes, it has. It's been moved to the, um, to the left three. That is a horizontal change. So I know that that goes inside with my X. Left three means in a negative direction and we know X is do the opposite, okay? So this would actually move my absolute value function. It would now look like this. Okay, now it's been moved over here, okay. So um, has it been um, stretched or compressed? No, it hasn't because I can still see because the vertex is at negative three zero. When I check the slope over one, down one, over one, down one, over one, down one, that is still a slope of um, a one or in this case, a negative one. So the slope has not changed. There's been no stretch or compression. I will not be multiplying by a constant, okay? Is there a reflection? Yes, there is. This, right, here's my absolute value function that I've written right now. Has it been reflected? Yes, over the x-axis, right, like this. Notice when I do that, that is a vertical flip, right? I went from up to down. And so that means that I do not multiply the x, I multiply the function by a negative because that is a vertical reflection over the x-axis. And then all you have to, if you put this in the graphing calculator, you will see that this is the, the function that you have, okay? What did I think needed to be done next? Oh, 63a. Okay, so we're gonna go to the end here. This says write an equation for f of x equals x squared for this graph. So we can see this is f of x equals x squared, right? And we know what, what y equals x squared looks like. It looks like this. I'll use f of x this time. You know what, I'll do this underneath. Okay, let's go through our list. Here's what we have. Here's our parent function. I kind of give myself some room. Is there anything I need to, um, I check, uh, does it need to be moved left or right or up or down? No, that vertex that was at zero, zero still is. There has been no movement of the function left or right or up or down. So I won't have any additions or subtractions, okay? Um, has there been um, a, a slope change? Uh, has there been a multiplying or stretching or compressing? Um, yes, there has. How do I know that? Because this point right here, is the point one, one, right? And when I put a one in, right, into the original function, I get a one out, right? So first of all, what I'm seeing here is that um, when I put a one into the function, I should get a negative three out. Right now, when I put a one in, I get a one out. I should get a negative three out, right? So there's two things going on here, right? They're both multiplications, right, again, I see a reflection, right? My x squared usually went upward, now it goes downward. Notice that is a vertical flip, right? Over the x axis. So I am going to put a negative outside of the x squared function. Okay, let's see if my function's right now. When I put in a one, one squared is one times a negative. I should get a negative one out but I get a negative three. Okay, now I know it hasn't moved left or right or up or down, right? I don't make this equation right. So I get a negative three out when I put a one in by adding or subtracting. We see it has not shifted. I already took care of a reflection. I must need to multiply by a number. It must have been stretched or compressed. So let's take a look. When I put a one into my function, I get a negative one out. I'm supposed to get a negative three. So I have to multiply by three. Let's see now if my point is a solution to my equation. When I put a one in, one squared is one, 
times the negative three is negative three. Yes, this solution point does make my equation true. Again, no additions or subtractions because it didn't move left or right or up or down. My negative is the reflection and multiplying by three shows my slope change so that it matches the point that they gave me. Okay, let's take a look at number 58. We're gonna do um, this one last because it can be confusing for students when there's a lot going on, okay? So write an equation with these characteristics. So it has to be the cubic shape, right? You know what that looks like, cubic. It has to be when you look at it, if you were to draw it or put it in the calculator, it has to be moved six units to the left and six units down and reflected over the y axis. Okay, so, and it says like your book will say followed by, followed by a reflection in the y axis. Okay, so and in the end, when you put your equation in the calculator, this is what you should see. Okay, now let's go ahead and write the cubic equation. Okay, and I hope you have this recorded. I'm going to erase this so I can have some room. Okay. Okay. Wish I wish it weren't sixes, but hey, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, here is what the cubic equation normally looks like, right? This is what we have right now, okay? We need six units to the left, right? That is addition or subtraction. Because it's horizontal, I will make sure to make that change inside with the x and left would mean plus six. So just this alone would make this function move left six, okay? Now, I want it to be six units down, okay? So that is a vertical, right, move. So I know it's addition or subtraction. And because it's vertical, it's not affecting the X. So I'm gonna put a minus six right out here, right? Because any changes to the function, not to the X are direct. I took care of this. Okay, now reflected over the y-axis, notice a reflect over the y-axis would go at the top here from right to left and at the bottom from left to right. Notice that my hand is making a horizontal movement over the y-axis. This means I need to put the negative on the x. Now, you have to be careful here my x was changed. My x is x plus six. I had to change the whole x. So, there we go. There we go. I, here was my new x in x plus six, and I took the opposite, I multiplied by a negative one, so that it would flip it over the y-axis and move it down six, right? Now, um, if you put this into the calculator, you would see the cubic function with this shape move left six, down six, and reflected over the y-axis, right? So it would look like this in purple. This is six, is it down six? And then it would go like this. That was supposed to be more curvy right there. Now, if you put this in your calculator, this is what you would see, the result of what they said. Now, this can be for confusing for students because notice if I multiply by a negative inside parentheses, it would say a negative x minus six, and you'd be like, minus six, isn't that going to make it move to the right, you know, uh, when it's a minus? And this is because of the order that you do these transformations in. So what I do is I keep it all separate, right? I can see right here, when you put an X in, the first thing that it ha that happens is it moves it left six, right? So that goes first, right? I can see it left, down, and then, right? So left, 
sorry about this. So <laughs> left, right? And then being multiplied by a negative will reflect it and it will move it down. So I liked, sure, can I distribute the negative to the X and to the plus six? Yes, but I like being able to see these perfect transformations by my rows. Left six, right here. Six down, right here. Reflect it over the Y axis, right here. So I leave mine just like that so I can see all three according to my rules. Anyway, I hope you have a great day and uh, we'll talk in class about um, why, these, why these things work when we have more time to discuss.